Okay, so we're going to be covering just an introduction and the motivation uh, of censored modeling and why this is sometimes preferred to other methods such as linear regression. So, for example, if we have a data set that kind of looks like the one on the left hand side here, where the dependent variable y is cut off at a certain point. So, for this one, um, as you can see, there's no data points below the, the value of zero. And of course, this can happen in multiple dimensions, but we're going to be just for the visualization purpose here, just focusing, focusing on one dimension. But when we work with the actual data, it's, I think, six dimensional or so. So as you can see, there's, there's this kind of cutoff point and fitting a standard linear model through this is going to have some bias because of this clustering of data points. And so we want to come up with something slightly more appropriate. So we create this latent index. And what that does is we fit a line through the through these uh, red data points here. And then we say that if the red data points or the, the latent dependent variable lies below the censored value, so zero, so all these data points right here, we say that they're, they're projected upwards like this. All these ones have the corresponding blue dots above them. And that's what we observe. We observe these blue dots when in reality there's this kind of distribution uh, and the, the line actually fits through here. But we observe the blue dots here. And that's what the model's kind of saying at a, at a high level. So. We say that the dependent variable is censored, and in this case, it's um, constra constrained to lie above zero. And so we create this latent variable, yi star, we call it. And um, we can see how we can then change the model so it, it fits this data better. So the Tobin model, as we call it, was developed by Tobin in 1958, and he was studying the household expenditure on durable goods. and uh, if you think about it, of course, expenditure on durable goods, it has to be um, in the positive region. Um, and so that's why the, the censored model is appropriate. Another case, automobile accidents. If you're trying to look at what de determinants um, amount to the, the damage in an automobile accident, such as if there's drink driving, the speed, weather, etc., uh, et like that then you can't have negative damages in an automobile accident. And of course, that's why the Tobit model is also used for that. And again, you can't supply negative labor. Um, but in this course, we're looking at the determinants of corporate dividend pol policy. Um, when, you, when you look at all these uh, examples I've talked about, the censored value is typically zero. Um, so that nothing can lie below zero. But there are other examples where the censored value is slightly higher or lower, perhaps. So for example, I often cite minimum wage laws. So if there's a minimum wage law saying that you can't pay employees less than $10 an hour, then nothing will be below $10 an hour. And so the, the censored value will be uh, less than 10. Um, and so we're going to keep it general in this course and call the censored value C in case you want to apply this to another model in the future. And this is typically the kind of frequency graph we see where, um, so example, if it's a zero censored uh, model or not model, but data, then we'll see the, the, this huge frequency spike at zero and then sort of a normal distribution or Gaussian distribution beyond that. Um, our data actually looks a little bit nicer than this, which is which is very nice. Um, but this is something that you would typically see. So this is the model and where why I star here is the, the latent variable. And so if we just go back a few slides, that is the model fitting through this red data here. And so we assume it to be uh, just a standard linear mo model where the um, we're denoting epsilon i as the, the the Gaussian noise. And 
we're we're saying i goes from one to n where i is the ith training example um in the in the data set and um beta and x these are vectors um because uh, of course if we're working with multiple dimensions then beta is going to be the weight parameters controlling each one of those um factors in the model so what what the second line here is saying is that yi the dependent variable that we observe is equal to yi star if yi star lies above the centered value otherwise c if yi star is less than or equal to the centered value um this makes sense because if we go back again it's saying we observe yi star if yi star is above c in this case zero and if y i star is less than or equal to c then we observe the centered value c and another way of writing this is of course y i is equal to the maximum of c or y i star this is y i star right here if you substitute in um so we make an indicator function which is or indicate a variable just uh, this right here dt and we set it to zero if yi is greater than c so what remember when yi is greater than c that's when um, yi star is greater than c and we set it to one if yi is equal to c or yi star is less than or equal to c and this helps us to distinguish between um each one of the the components in the log likelihood function when we um which we actually derive in the in in one of the following videos so this is what we come up with and this is going to be an important slide um so i recommend that you keep note of this somewhere because this is going to be used when you do the when you build the model in tensorflow later on so this first term here, one minus dt. So dt is one of these. And so basically when dt is equal to one, this entire term here is turned off 